are not getting fewer. So it does take a lot of mental strength to survive today. Uh, burying people daily is not something that we are used to as South Africans. Um, it is difficult, but we must hope that we will be getting on and on. So I want to quickly put uh, the um, request, if there is any, for apologies or whatever. The tabling of apologies, is there any? Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker is delayed. He's still trying to... Uh to log in. Um, I think uh, that uh, it is a shame that Deputy Speaker is in Cape Town. He's always struggling with the connection and Parliament is just next to him. I, I think there's something wrong with us. We must just go and see what is happening there. Um, that is the apology. Is there any other apology? Yes, good morning, Honourable Speaker and uh, colleagues. Yes, uh, I just received a message from Honourable Swart that he is struggling to connect to try and join us later. But just to say, amid all the doom and gloom, I'm very happy to announce that uh, our leader, Schenger, uh, turns 92 today, after having gone through a quarantine period in, of COVID, and he's still fit and healthy. Thank you. Well, we can all join in and wish him many more. His generation is going. His generation must stay on, perhaps just to point us in the right direction, all of us, because they do have a duty to do that. So happy birthday to Schenge. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, we note Mr. Swartz's uh, um, apology. Is there any other apology, honorable members? Yes, my speaker. Yes, please proceed. Mentang uh, Winnie is of six today. Okay, apology, Ramen Langwini is noted. Any other? None? If that is the case, I put the agenda for consideration. Is there anybody calling for adoption? I move for adoption, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. That is seeing any seconder? I Natasha second. Speaker. And Natasha seconds, and there is a third voice that also says, thank you very much. I want to quickly put the minutes of um, the 20th of August for your consideration. Item number three. Have members had sight of the minutes? Yes, Honorable uh, Speaker. Can we take you page by page, page one? Uh, Honorable Speaker, I understand that Honorable Linguesi was present in the meeting and it's not reflected in the minutes. Thank you. Okay, let the record be corrected. Um, page two. Anything on page two? None? Page three. Page four. And five. Six. And the last little sticky on page seven. So the minutes, do they reflect the meeting of the 20th of August, honorable members? Natasha moves for adoption of the minutes, speaker. Thank you, Mayor Mazzoni. Any second? I second. I second, uh, honorable Member speaker. Member Jodina seconds. We move on, honorable members, to matters arising. Any matter arising? Yes, Honourable Speaker. Member Jodina, please take the floor. Yes, Honourable Speaker, thank you very much and, and uh, morning to colleagues. Uh, Honourable Speaker, on page two, uh, on the AG ad hoc committee. Yes. Uh, which whose uh, deadline is the 31st of August uh, to, 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 to report to the House. 
Um, mm. Also on page three, I'm just flaking them, uh, Honorable Speaker, if it, that is correct with you. Okay. Then on page three, on page three, um, on on public hearings, if there is any progress when it comes to other means of ensuring that uh, public hearings reach, we reach out to all uh, South Africans as much as, as possible. So those are the two matters uh, arising that have uh, uh, lifted the honourable speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, um, yes ma'am. Ma'am Kalipi? Yes, speaker. On page one, on the report, yes, uh, on the report of committee section, speaker, uh, on the bank, uh, South African Bank, South African Reserve Bank Amendment Bill and National Health Amendment Bill. If you can get a report on that uh, aspect, speaker. Okay. Any other matter arising? Yes, sir. Madam yes, speaker. Madam speaker. Uh, that is seeing. Thank you very much, honourable speaker. Yes. In addition to, in addition to the that items. That will follow. Okay, sorry, ma'am. In addition to the items on appointment uh, of the AG, which I will speak to when the matter comes up, there is also the matter of the Secretary of Parliament and the PBO Director. Uh, the other item that I thought we should flag, Honourable Speaker, is the, uh, if I can recall, the cannabis bill had a particular deadline, a constitutional deadline. So where are we with that? And the last issue would be uh, written responses to the Deputy President's questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Castle. Good morning, Madam Speaker. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, Speaker. Oh, and Dr. Julius, I'm sorry. Please take the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There's still an outstanding uh, report by the committee section. Uh, I don't know whether Honorable Frolic uh, sent the report or something, but that can also be merged with uh, the challenge that was brought up yesterday in the Chief Forum by Honorable Chief Humble on the NCOP and NA uh, joint committees uh, in terms of handling legislation. Uh, so if we can just meet those two so that we don't have it as a separate item. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Kasso, you have the floor? Thank, thank, you, okay. thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker, before that, Kaso, so he can uh, respond. Ma'am Kalipi. Yes. On the last page, Speaker, on the other committee, Speaker, if we can be updated. Yes. Thanks. Um, okay. All right. In that day, Kaso, on the floor. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I um, would like to request that the matters to do with the bills. Uh, we wait for the report from the bill's office and from the committee section. The AG's matter, there is a motion on the order paper uh, for this afternoon, extending the term of that ad hoc committee to the, the end of September. Uh, there was a request from the committee uh, for their term, for its term to be extended until f around 15th of September but we think that it is safer to extend it until the end of September. The main reason seems to be the delay in, in, um, in obtaining security clearance on qualifications and other matters. But uh, the chair does indicate that state security is assisting with that matter. Um, that is the first thing, uh, Madam Speaker. The second one relates to section 25 and what is being done. Uh, a proposal has been submitted to the House Chairperson for committees. And in essence, the proposal is proposing a, uh, or rather is, is, is suggesting that we have a hybrid approach to this, um, where you use the virtual platforms as well as um, uh, public hearings as we know them, still adhering to, to, to the regulations in terms of social distancing and other, and other factors. But House Chairperson Frolic is dealing with that, and I think in due course he will um, uh, update this committee. The next one relates to responses by the Deputy President. Our understanding is that there is agreement uh, among the whips 
that um, there should be written responses and a motion to that effect will be uh, processed by the House uh, next week, enabling the Deputy President to submit the responses in writing. What we'll just need to clarify is whether the, the, the motion should also speak to supplementary questions in terms of how those will be dealt with um, when the time does arrive. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Um, all the matters covered, we have agreed that issues relating to the committee bills and so on will wait for that item and we will deal with those there. Is there any other matter arising, colleagues? Madam Speaker, with, yes, your, with your permission, ma'am, with your permission, Madam Speaker, the issue of uh, joint meetings between NA and NCOP, the matter is receiving attention. Um, the letter was indeed received from the EFF yesterday, and advice has been prepared on that, and um, that will be considered by, by the speaker, and a response will be... Um, will be processed. And I think at, at the right time, this committee will be informed in terms of how the matter is being taken forward. Thank you. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, committees of parliament can sit and confer. There's nothing wrong with that. What we want to take advice on is whether in the conferring and in the core sittings, uh, mandates specific to the two houses are being fudged. So we want clarity on that so that we can then uh, come back and respond on that matter. Um, is there any other question? Uh, uh, in that order. Okay. <laughs> and that is seen. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Natasha, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Mayor Natasha, after that is seen. Ma'am Kalipi, you have the floor. Diabulela, Speaker. Benkuna Okcheka no Babukaso, if it's you as the Speaker of National Assembly or it's him in the office who's going to respond in terms of matters arising regards ad hoc committee that was part and parcel of this discussion last time. AP ad hoc committee. Right. I may assist, ma'am. I may assist, Madam okay. Speaker. No, I'm asking very deliberately because I thought we had touched on it. But please go on in that day, class. Madam Speaker, I think the Honourable Member is referring to a proposal to establish an ad hoc committee on the issue of COVID or allegations of COVID related uh, oh, corruption. Matters, yeah. Yeah, matters. And um, the speaker responded to the EFF, and the speaker's response was, the motion itself technically uh, does meet the requirements of the rules, and that the motion would be placed under further business. And what that means is that um, through the normal programming uh, processes, the motion will then be, will then be uh, uh, attended to, and that could also mean that when the party has a slot available for a member's motion, the motion could then be scheduled for consideration by the House. So as far as the Speaker is concerned, the Speaker has done what the, the rules require of the Speaker to do. Um, and, and, and the matter is now with the party. And of course, I, I'm aware that the party has raised the issue in, within the context of the Chiefs Forum and even in this context. Whether a committee is established or not established is up to the House uh, uh, in, in, in this, in, uh, under these circumstances. It's only in the recess where the House is, is in recess for more than 14 days that the Speaker would then be required in terms of the rules to take such a decision. But under the circumstances, it, it is really up to the House and its structures. Thank you. Ma'am Kalipi, that was our response. Memente? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Uh, part of my question is answered now by uh, Mr. Castle. The second one, Speaker, is um, I don't know how from your office you can deal with this matter, but it's, it's, it's very important and also equally frustrating. The other committee on AG, 
or to appoint the new HG, did everything and it's on track in terms of time and adhered to all rules and regulations. But the issue of um, the qualifications and the issue of intelligence, the Committee of Intelligence and its delays, every time there is an appointment by parliament and where it has to clear candidates, it always drags committees forever. And it's been an issue even in the previous parliament, and I've been observing something is wrong with that committee, and they can't even prioritize. So it's, it's really, really very risky to extend periods simply because they can't clear candidates. And we can't identify people. You'll remember, Speaker, that just recently we had to suspend true parliament a magistrate for shenanigans. And that talks to that committee as well. So we cannot really have an intelligence that takes forever to clear candidates. And it drags the work of parliament. We look like incompetent people, and it's not us. Thank you, Speaker. Please intervene. Thank you, thank you, thank you ma'am. We must say on record that as soon as the committees indicate who they have finalized, we write to the minister directly. Wow. And uh, in this particular instance, she responded in time to say that they are on it. So we will write again and say, can you please hurry up because you are making us incompetent to quote you, Memente, because it is indeed not very nice to wait and wait. It is not only about uh, the, it is also about the applicants themselves being um, left hanging for too long, not knowing whether they should be proceeding to other things or not. So it is not fair. We will spring on it. Uh, Mema Jodina? Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. On the same matter of AG, Honorable Speaker, maybe to 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 confirm uh, that uh, in the Chiefs Forum we agreed uh, that uh, let there be extension given uh, what uh, Honorable Mente has just said. However, I want to make a special appeal um, uh, uh, to you, um, uh, uh, Presiding Officer, that uh, maybe when we deal with such matters. Uh, no, we not. must when when you communicate, you we, we must as well uh, give a turnaround time to say within so many days we request that uh, 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 the intelligence must have done their work so that we can also be able to to be in line with our timelines. Thank you very much. Now we will do so. Um, we will actually ask that there is a dedicated team on standby for our requests. Because in that way, um, we will not be told about all the other matters which are within the department, which are lining up. You will remember how long we struggled to get to set up the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence, because we're waiting for clearance also. So I am quite, quite clear that um, we do need to have a talk with the minister there to to sort things out. Um, Dr. Singh, were you next? Yes, thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. I just want to throw a curved ball on the matter of the appointment uh, of the Auditor General and just say that perhaps it's not only uh, the fact that intelligence hasn't given us the report. There could be other reasons. And I think those reasons we need to know as a committee, if there are other reasons that is delaying the finalization of the work of the committee. I really thought that as members on that committee, we will get a clean audit in terms of completing our work on time as requested by Parliament. But it seems we're not going to get a, uh, a clean audit. Uh, we're going to be qualified. Uh, but having said that, Chairperson, I note that the proposal is to extend the work of the committee to the 30th of September. Now, we are not going to have a plenary until the 25th of October. And if the committee completes its work and you publish the report, it means for two or three weeks it's going to be a matter of public speculation and debate within the public. So could we not consider that even if the committee completes its work, 
before that period. The publication is a few days before uh, the plenary. I'm just uh, making that suggestion uh, to uh, the programming not, committee. We look you. into that, that is it. We look into that. Uh, members, on you, are you next? I was, thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, just in terms of the joint sittings that happened between the NA and the NCOP with regards to legislation, Speaker, I've had a look at the at the rules as well as the joint rules, and I am concerned that in certain instances we are um, unintentionally flouting the rules because there is a reason that the bill first goes through the National Assembly and then goes to the National Council of Provinces, as you well know, or there might be instances where the bill is introduced at the NCOP and tagged as such and then comes to the NA. And I think that what's happening is that there is not enough time for discussions to take place uh, on the virtual platform and that it's causing unnecessary friction and um, unnecessary confusion because there are instances where the NCOP members have no idea um, about where, where we stand with the bill in the NA and vice versa. So I, could we please ask that the state law advisor also writes a report that is given to us urgently regarding uh, the joint uh, uh, work done by these particular committees, as I do think that the emergency period in which we allowed the, these committees to sit together is now over and that the committees can go back to their, to their normal uh, ways of, of operation. And then lastly, Speaker, you will remember that um, about uh, three months ago, the Democratic Alliance wrote to your good office and asked for um, a committee to be established to conduct oversight regarding um, COVID, uh, commit COVID heavy committees um, in terms of the way they would deal with procurement and uh, any form of corruption, etc. We received a letter back from uh, Honorable Tsunoli at the time who informed us that uh, such request for committee had not been granted. Um, given the, the fact that we're now sitting at a stage where the COVID corruption is now just completely out of control, and we as Parliament are grappling with how we deal with uh, bringing the COVID corruption uh, back under control and holding those to account, I was wondering if it would be possible for your office to relook at the establishment of that COVID oversight committee, because I think that the need for it has now become um, incredibly warranted and incredibly needed. Um, and I don't think that there would be um, any problem with, with us looking back and saying, all right, now we, we absolutely do need it and, and we will look at the establishment thereof. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Ms. Mazzoni. There's um, always room for us to go back to decisions or um, conclusions we have taken. We shall really look at the matter and come back to you um, on that. Uh, I will also have a discussion with the DS and and uh, and Dade Kaso, and we will come back to you on this matter. And Dade Julius, were you next? Okay, I wrote you down. Maybe. Okay. All right. Um, no, no, Madam thank Speaker. you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I, I actually wanted to, to raise on a point of privilege earlier. Uh, you know, there was a song that we sang when I grew up, Kibatla Husibona Siruru Bele. And I can't see the colorful chief whip of the ANC fully because the, the screen, I just wanted to move to the whole screen so that we can see the full color of the. Kibatla Siruru Bele, ne? Yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know what a sururu belle is, it's uh, the butterfly. <laughs> uh, I didn't know uh, the man is. I didn't know the man is a poet. <laughs> well, the man went to school and to varsity in the northwest, so he will definitely know what a sururu belle is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Are you are you seeing your sururu belle now? <laughs> okay, honorable members, um, is there any member I'm jumping? Ma Madam Speaker. <laughs> uh, okay. in I just needed to clarify uh, the point made by uh, Honorable Singh. Is Honorable Singh proposing that the date be changed from the 31st, from 30th of September to later in October? 
because once the term of the committee comes to an end, the committee has to report. Mm. Uh, because it's an ad hoc committee. So the term can't come to an end and the, and, the, and the report of the committee is not published. So I think I just wanted to clarify that point. I think you are saying let us look at the possibility if they finish at the time when we are not sitting that we publish the report, a possibility of publishing earlier than waiting for the full house or find a mechanism of extending that period to coincide with the sitting of the house. He's saying to us, look at the mechanics of this thing because you can't have a committee concluding and then silence and speculation out there in the public. So he's asking us to look at both sides of the coin and come up with the best possible option that we can achieve. And I think that we should again throw this into uh, the possibilities. Uh, Chief Whips, you can advise on this one. Uh, we will also be thinking hard on it. Ndate um, Kaso, was that the only thing you wanted to come back on? No, ma'am, it, it, it was the only thing, uh, especially that uh, if the motion to extend is not done today, it means the term of the committee lapses at, uh, on Monday and the committee will have to be re-established. So I just wanted to highlight that so that there's clarity when we leave this meeting. Thanks. Okay, okay. Um, but what I think what Ntadesim is raising is, is also crucial for us to consider. Can we start thinking that maybe by the end of this meeting we can bring an idea on the table that can help us so that today this motion goes in. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, shall we proceed to another item, members? Is there any other member wishing to express? Okay. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Yes, ma'am. On the on the on the issue of uh, the, the 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 deputy president and responses. Yes, we, we 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 discussed this this uh, matter yesterday as the, uh, in the chief Whips forum, taking from what we discussed in the NAPC, and we were in agreement that uh, because uh, the rules uh, had no provision for for written uh, replies, but uh, then we said, given the situation that we are in, let's 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 have a a, a, a motion in the house that will be a stopgap measure in the meantime so that uh, those uh, uh, questions are not overtaken by events. That is the motivation why we said, let's have that uh, motion in the house. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Machudina. The, I think the further question was, because uh, questions for oral reply gives members an opportunity to do follow-up questions, how do we deal with it? Um, if we, the, the responses are now converted into written responses, um, the, the, the consideration is, um, do we then give space for further questions based on the response that will come written? Because if it is a written response, it means that this person is not there to to the, the, the back and forth, which actually makes the question session lively, is, is not there. So that is another area that we really must look at. How do we uh, deal with uh, converted questions? Uh, do we forfeit then the opportunity for members to make uh, the follow-up questions? I think that was the thing that was outstanding. Uh, I think we accepted that it is a better option, this motion for a stopgap, until the DP is, is um, in good health to take on these questions. So we will be advised uh, on this matter, whether it is complete forfeiture of supplementaries or whether there is a way we can deal with it. Okay. Honorable Speaker. Singh. Uh, sorry, uh, also arising from the minutes was the two items of the appointment of the Secretary to Parliament and the Director PBO. Do we have yes. any progress yes. progress on that one? Thank you. Yes. Um, the Kaso, um, is your memory fresher than mine, Lichesa? Ma'am, I, I, I could attempt on the PBO matter. Yes. The understanding is that in the meantime an acting director will be 
uh, appointed, while the committee um, that is dealing with the appointment of the director is still processing um, the applications. So an acting director will be appointed as, as soon as is possible, and hopefully or possible, by the 1st of September. Um, yes, we, we've already um, said that that must be done. And I thought that we would say that um, given the, the complexity of the applications that we received, it has taken us a little bit longer. But I was told that there is a possibility that before we go we far, we, we might have a candidate who would be able to step in there as a head of PBO. So I'm very hopeful. On the matter of the Secretary to Parliament, Castle, do you want to jog my memory also? Uh, okay. Mem, no. Is that, is, is Ma Mekiawa around? Yes, yes. Yes. yes, I am. Yes. Mekiawa. Yes. Yeah. I think members must know we presented on the 5th of August a report to the executive authority um, after advertising for the Secretary to Parliament, uh, a process that ended in March. We made a follow up presentation on the 5th of August to request for talent search. And that executive authority meeting agreed that we should go for talent search which is what we are doing. Together with that, the executive authority also recommended that we put together a uh, panel, which will have to include external personnel on it like we did before. So that report is going to be going back to the executive authority in the next week. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Members. Yes, yes. and I just think you remember that with the last secretary, we actually had even representatives from parties on that panel. We think it is the best way to go again to allow for a very wide um, uh, panel, which will look at different parts. We might also say to you that uh, uh, we have uh, reviewed and we have told the administration that, uh, uh, you know, there is a vacancy for chief uh, CFO, um, that we have reviewed the the, the requirements of the post, and we think that we should not generalize that post looking at uh, the size of the budget that of parliament, that it is too huge for us to just go grab. So we are also there um, going to come back and say the, this is what we are looking at, and uh, because CVFO is a very strategic post in any, any institution. So we'll, we are also struggling there to get uh, people. But I think we were struggling also because the, the way the advert was, it was almost like we, we're dealing with a department, we're dealing with an arm of state, and therefore we must take ourselves a little bit more seriously. So we, we're really looking at that also. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Um, is there any other outstanding responses? Honorable Speaker. Yes, Ma'am Kalipi. If I can ask, Speaker, in terms of what the uh, acting secretary is explaining in terms of the process, do you have a time frame on this one? Mayor um, did we put a time frame? Yes, Ma'am. Um, from the 5th of August, we said if we get the, the company which we have gotten, because we do have a company that does talent search, it takes 21 days to put the advert out. It takes another 14 days to notify and shortlist. And of course, another four to seven days to arrange for appointment for the appointments, depending entirely on the availability of the panel. Because often, if we use external members, external uh, panel members, we obviously have to go by the diary. So it's going to take a good two months, um, hopefully by October, November, the executive authority will be presenting to the Joint Standing Committee the final appointment to the final process to appoint the accounting office of parliament. Thank you. However, those timelines we still have to present to the executive authority, like you say, next week. Like Speaker said, there are a whole range of other positions that we have to re report to the executive authority in terms of timelines. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, honorable members. Um, Shall we proceed to the other item, item five? 
committee section Tatita already good morning madam speaker honorable morning, members madam. and colleagues uh, our presentation starts from slide number two we we are indicating that uh, we have uh, one section 74 bill 24 ordinary bills currently before NA committees 12 of this section 75 bills 10 of them are attacked and two are not yet checked. 12 of the 76 bills, 11 of them are checked and one not yet checked. And we are also saying, Madam Speaker, that of the 24 bills before NA committees, six are members' bills. The bills appear on slides 8, 24, 25, 28, 29, and 33. That is for the benefit of members. And together with this report, Madam Speaker, there is an addendum containing loan titles of the bills in this report. We are also having nine other matters before committees and five petitions. The next update is on slide number eight, Madam Speaker. That is before standing committee on finance is the South African Reserve Bank amendment bill. It is a member's bill. Uh, the update is the committee had briefings on the 18th of August from the uh, 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 legal services and the committee had the deliberations on the 25th of August. The next update, Madam Speaker, is on slide number 12. It is uh, before PC on Justice and Correctional Services is the State Liability Amendment Bill. The briefings were postponed uh, due to an availability of the department and the committees to schedule. The next update is on slide number 15, before PC on justice and correctional services, is criminal law amendment bill, in particular sexual offenses and related matters. It is a new referral that was done on the 19th of August. The committee has planned for briefings on the 25th of August, but the meeting was the, the briefing was postponed because of the cancellation of the meeting, and the committee is to schedule again. Next update, Madam Speaker, is on slide number uh, 19. Before standing committee on finance, it is financial sector loss amendment bill. It's a new referral that was received on the 17th of August. The committee is to schedule for this bill. The next update is on slide number 21. Before PC on agriculture, land reform and rural development, it is the upgrading of land China amendment bill. The public hearings on the 25th and 26th went on well and the committee will continue the public hearings on the 28th of August, and the aim to finalize the bill is the 1st of September. The next update, Madam Speaker, is on slide number 23. That is uh, uh, the Local Government Municipal Systems Amendment Bill before PC on COCTA. The committee is planning further deliberations on the 4th of, the se of September, with the aim to finalize the bill on that day. The next update is on slide number 24. Before standing committee on finance is public finance management amendment bill. It is a, a member's bill. The committee is still to schedule for this bill. Next update is on slide number 25. It's also before standing committee on finance. It is fiscal responsibility bill, also a member's bill. Uh, the committee is still to schedule for this bill. Next update is on slide number 28. It is uh, the National Health Amendment Bill. It is a member's bill. Before PC on health, the committee is still to schedule for this bill. Next update is on slide number 29. Before PC on mineral resources and energy. It is independent electricity management operator bill. It is a member's bill. The committee 
planned deliberations on the 25th of August and also further deliberation on the 1st of September. The next update, Madam Speaker, is on slide number 30. It is Economic Regulation Transport Bill before PC on Transport. The committee is planning public hearings towards the end of October. The next update is on slide number 33. Before Standing Committee on Finance, it is another public finance management amendment bill. It's a member's bill that was received on the 7th of July. The committee is still to schedule for this bill. The next update is on slide number 35. It is a statutory amendment before PC on Justice and Correctional Services. That is for the member of the information reg regulator. The committee has uh, uh, finished the shortlisting and uh, the committee is to conduct interviews the next term. The next update is on slide number 36. Before uh, justice, PC on justice and correctional services, it is suspension from office uh, of Ms. K. Bodlani, acting regional magistrate. The committee has planned for the briefings in August and the meeting that was to deliberate on the matter on the 25th of August was postponed. The committee has now planned a new date for September with the aim to finalize the matter on that day. The next update is on slide number 37. It's uh, a matter before PC on justice and correctional services. It is the salary determination of the deputy public protector. It's a new referral. The committee is still to schedule. The next update is on slide number 39. That is before PC on social development. It is a statutory appointment for the members of the Central Drug Authority. The committee has developed a program that starts in September with the aim to finalize the report on the 5th of November. The next update is on slide number 41. The ATO committee to appoint the Auditor General. The matter has already been deliberated earlier on but what I can uh, report, Madam Speaker, is to indicate that the interviews have been concluded. What is left is for the committee to deliberate on the 28th of August, but the committee is still waiting for the security clearance report so that the deliberations and conclusion of the matter can be done, uh, subject to the extension because the, the lifespan of the committee is coming to an end at the 31st of August. The next update, Madam Speaker, is on slide number 42. That is the Director of Parliamentary Budget Office. The matter has also been discussed. We just want to uh, reiterate that the Deputy Directors will be acting on rotational basis until the Director is appointed. Uh, Madam Speaker, the delay in this process was also due to the fact that the Chairperson of the Joint Subcommittee and another member are also members of the ad hoc committee to appoint the Auditor General. But the committee has been advised to develop a program, and in the next meeting, we believe we will come up with the latest developments. This concludes, Madam Speaker, our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, the floor is yours. Thank you, Speaker. Madam Kalipi. Can we get an update from the committee section in terms of the NYDA? It's not reflecting on the program, but I believe that the process has been finalized. Thanks, Speaker. Um, is there any other member? Yes, Speaker. Yes, Memento. Yeah, there is rather disturbing information that uh, Justice Committee postponed but there are no reasons reflected and they were supposed to get briefings on the on the bills which seeks to amend um, the current legislation on issues of GBV. And we can't have a committee just postponing and there's nothing we are given as to, especially something that's tangible 
and uh, and that can justify them not to sit and deal with such important matters. Any other member? Honorable Frolik, is that your voice? Yes. Good morning, Honorable Speaker. Good morning, Honorable Members. Um, mm -hmm. Honorable Speaker, if I may just respond on the two matters that has now been raised, the one on the NYDA, it's out of the hands of that error committee. That report is on the order paper, so the committee, the error committee, have no further uh, task to fulfill as far as that is concerned. And then secondly, Madam Speaker, all of us are aware of the tragic death of one of the members of the uh, Portfolio Committee on Justice and Correctional Services, who played the key role because the way they work, they work into, in different groups and substreams on how they process matters. And um, I had a long discussion with the chairperson of the committee, and they are busy reorganizing themselves and updating their program. So the postponement is largely due to the fact that they lost a member of that committee earlier this week. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Um, on the um, NYDA, it is true the committee has reported, but we must also state that we have had some challenges to the processes of the committee. I have not reached any conclusion because I still have to call, uh, get advice on it. Uh, on the because I want to be satisfied that, in fact, what the committee did from start to finish was correct and is a, cannot be attacked as it is being challenged. So we want to just um, be satisfied that we are on top of the things. But it is true that the committee has reported on this matter. It is just that there are interesting challenges to the outcomes and the process. Dr. Senudi, did you want to say anything? Oh, I saw the, the, the name popping. So we will look into that, um, but we will also be asking for a discussion in Dr. Frolik around the NYDA. Because as you say, you are right, they have reported, they have concluded their work, but there are challenges which are legal yeah, we'll do uh, to that process, yes. We'll do so. Yeah. Um, is there any other matter, honorable members? Yes, Speaker. Yes, Ma'am Kalipi. The one that I raised under matters arising, and then the Speaker said it will reflect when the bill section a report on what I raised last week, and Dr. Frolik said he's going to talk to the chairpersons of the committee, if we can get an update to that regard, Speaker. Dr. Frolik. Honorable Speaker, Edgar Tau just reported now on the private members' legislation when he went through the list of um, the work that is currently in front of the different uh, committees. So it is contained in the report. Ma'am Kalipe, do you have your response? Yes, Speaker, no, it's fine if it's there. The committee needs to schedule it because last time the discussion was that there is a movement between the bill sections and the committee. And then we wanted the, interf um, the intervention of, Frolic, of Mr. Frolic. So I wanted to check on that one. If it's in the front of the committees, it's well and good, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there any other member before we finish off with uh, the committee section report? None. Thank you very much. We then move on to the bill's office. Dr. Bell, are you ready? Uh, thank you, Honorable. Hey, okay. But, yeah. Yes, member. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Good morning, Honorable members and colleagues. Uh, on our report today, we will report on slide four, uh, where we would like to give an update on the gender-based violence bills received by the Office for Processing. The bills are progressing smoothly, and they could be introduced by the 4th of September. The three bills that we've received is the Domestic Violence Amendment Bill, 
the Children's Amendment Bill, Criminal and Related Matters Amendment Bill. And in addition to these three bills that we've received, we are also working on the Compensation of Occupational Diseases and Injuries Amendment Bill, and also the bill that they've asked about, which is the Cannabis for Private Purposes Bill. We've also received that bill, and it will also be introduced shortly. And the office continues to inquire on the other three priority bills to be introduced in 2020, which is the tobacco and electronic delivery systems, the electoral, electoral laws amendment bill, and the expropriation bill. And lastly, the bill's office is in contact with Treasury in preparation for the introduction of the MTPPS in October. That's all in our report for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor is open, members. Honourable Speaker. That is soon. Yes, thank you very much for the report. Uh, you know what I'm going to be talking about. The cannabis bill. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to recall what the constitutional deadline was, and I don't think we're going to meet it. And what are we doing in that regard? Thank you. <laughs> we'll have to look at that, the deadline for that. Yeah. Um, any other member? None? That is the shortest uh, discussion on the report from the bill's office. Uh, Mayor Majake, it seems you are now on the hot seat. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and good morning to all. Good morning, Mayor. Uh, the program is on the screen. We are now on week number 27, 26, Thursday the 27th, this with programming between 10 and 13 hours. We will have multi-party women's caucus up to, that goes up to 13 hours. At 14 hours, we're going to have a plenary uh, up to 17 hours. And the main business of the day will be questions to the president. Uh, tomorrow, the 28th of August, uh, is the day for women's parliament. The week that follows is the week of, uh, week number 27. Monday, the 31st of August, uh, it's Constituency Day. Tuesday, the 1st of September, uh, between 10 and 12.45, uh, we've got committees. And then at uh, 14 hours, up to 18 hours, we've got plenary um, hybrid system uh, to notice the debate on urgent matter of national uh, public uh, importance, um, which is a debate sponsored by the DJ, uh, D DA on recent scourge of farm attacks and murders on farmers and farm workers. And the rest is the reports. And then um, the next day is um, Wednesday, the 2nd of September, between uh, 9 and 12.45 is committees uh, between 10 and 11 hours. It's a chief whips forum. And um, at 15 hours is plenary. And the main business of the day is questions for oral reply, cluster two social services. Thursday, the 3rd of September, um, 8.30 is programming. Between 10 and 13 hours is uh, caucus by political parties. At 14 hours, it's plenary up to 18 hours. And to note is the statement by Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture on transformation of heritage landscape in South Africa. Uh, also, what has been a subject of discussion in terms of the reports that, uh, that will be presented on the day is the consideration of the report of PC on women, youth, and persons with disabilities on filling of vacancies on National Youth Development Agency. Uh, it's a proposal. Um, and then Friday, the 4th of September, uh, we've got PGIR meeting as a proposal. 
and constituency period will stretch from the 7th of September to the 5th of October. I thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Members, for your consideration, your discussion, the program. Ndadusing, is your hand up? I'm volunteering. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No hand today. <laughs> Uh, Nobody is bailing the cat. Dada Frolik, is your hand up? I speaker. Yes. No, no honorable speaker. Well, in terms of my, my, my iPad, your hand is up. So please take your hand out. What is the, what? Your, the hand is raised for you, Dada Frolik. So if you are not speaking, can we have it uh, withdrawn? Is there any other member who wishes to speak on the program? Yes, Madam Speaker, it's Dr. Muller speaking. Dr. Muller, good morning. You have the yes, floor. Good morning. I just want to make one technical point, which I think is important. The debate on Tuesday that deals with farm murders um, in terms of Rule 130 is not sponsored by a political party. If you have a look at the rule, it's sponsored by a member. And the reason I'm making that point is because we may, then may perhaps confuse that with party motions. It's something completely different. It's not sponsored by a political party. The rule still is state it's sponsored by a specific member. Thank you. Thank you. The point is taken, Dr. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Speaker Steve Swart. Yeah, sorry, I've joined a bit oh, late. Yes, you yes, yes. We did get your apology, Dr. Swart, that you had problems. Not of yes, your own, you. yes. I just wondered whether there would be a need for um, a programming committee meeting next week, given the fact that we are going into constituency uh, the following week. So, uh, and I suppose the same might apply to Chief Whips, whether it is necessary at all. Um, but I leave that in the hands of the of Parliament and yourself, Speaker. Thank you, sir. We shall consider that. Uh, we shall consider that. If there is need, we will communicate as quickly as we can, either way. Is there any other member? Nothing on the program, honorable members? Yo, thank you very much. It Remember looks okay. Speaker, honorable speaker, yes. so you're really looking thank for you, takers speaker. this morning. No. You're really looking no. for takers this morning. I'm actually quite happy. Um, if we, we we are happy with this, is there any other member who may have any announcement to make? The announcement is here for. Oh, <laughs> Voma, and I'm there, Voma. I'm joining you on that one. If Sia Voma, then I announce closure of the meeting and a very good day to you, honorable members. Thank you. Speaker. Yes, yes, sir. I'm saying you are not having a long meeting because if the chief whips usually agree on matters, you don't have a lot of debates in the point that the purple if the whips have processed things, we find each other quite very quickly. Thank you very much, honorable member. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.